continuing our space battle game coming up on Machine Learning Basics. Hey folks, this week we're going to be taking another look at our space bottle game and we're going to be going into the code a little bit more, show you some of the refinements and improvements that I've made to the application and all of that is going to be available on the GitHub page. So the Patreon supporters have chimed in. They said, nope, Blake, keep everything, all of the models, all of the 3D art, anything you make for this, make sure that it's all open source and put it all up on the GitHub. So it'll all be up there. And I also went into uh, a little bit of a rabbit hole exploring parallelized machine learning for this problem and so I'm going to share those results with you as well. So first things first let's talk code. Um, so we have we had our ship agent this is ship agent 2 lovely name. Um, so some of the things that I did I first of all I took let me get that out of the way um, took the environment that we had um, I moved out a lot of the code that was based on the game itself, and that's in another class. But this is actually, you know, so the ship code is really just about the ship and how the player moves almost completely. So this is actually gone, as is that. Got a little bit of code cleanup yet, but. We're in pretty good shape. So, again, there's the ship's turn speed, acceleration speed, how much does it get as a reward if it survives a frame, and then how much is the penalty if it gets destroyed. And now we have a Boolean emit events on or off. This allows us to have one piece of logic that controls whether or not we emit events across the rest of the code base because the event emission is really just for tying on a nice looking user interface. It's not important to how it does the training or any of the work that it does there. And so I just have a one button click where I can just say, you know what, I'm going to turn off all of the events uh, so that I can save the processing power and um, all the calls and everything, you know, it, it all just goes through a couple of booleans. So it's a very, very quick compare as opposed to um, emitting events that aren't doing anything. Um, let's see here. Collecting observations is just like before. So we have ourself, our position, the environment width and the environment height. Are, these are just pre-calculated to normalize. That's true. Um, to normalize the input value. So before is giving it raw input values. The downside with that is that it's not very flexible so that if you scale up the world or scale down the world, um, it's gonna need to retrain. In this case, by providing it scaled values already, normalized values, that will allow the system to train on one set of input values and then you, know, you might make the world 10% bigger but that doesn't affect it much because uh, the world is always considered going the minimum size is from negative one and then the maximum size is positive one. And so the inputs that we're providing now are normalized. And that actually helps stabilize training and it helps it train faster. A lot of neural networks under the hood really do optimally work on values between negative one and one. Uh, again, uh, the bullets as well, we're going to see that there's a, a kind of a maximum speed here, and that's this max bullet speed. And so every speed is divided by that maximum, again, to get a normalized value between 0 and 1, where 1 would be that full bullet speed. Uh, angular velocity, that's divided by 360 because that's in degrees. Uh, and then for each of the bullets, we get the position and the speed of those as well, the, both the X and Y speed. So you know basically what direction it's moving in and how quickly. Uh, when a collision happens, we die. And again, if we are emitting events, then we invoke that. Um, agent action, so this is when it's our turn, we've collected our observations, what do we do? We either thrust, turn, or shoot, that hasn't changed. Now all of the event emissions is happening in one big block. 
so that we can do that check uh, quickly and easily. Um, thrusting is we just add to our acceleration and then we turn, we either add or subtract from our angular velocity of the rigid body. And then if we have survived another frame, we add that reward and then to reset, we find new positions and we tell the environment to reset the bullet. So we've removed a lot of code from this class, which is really better software engineering, right? Now we're going to go into Stay Alive Game 2. So this is the bigger class. This represents the world and more importantly, the bullets flying around in it. So we now have a width and height, maximum speed, minimum speed, bullet lifetime. One of the other tweaks that I made, I wanted to make the game harder because what would happen is you could have an environment where you shoot bullets in it and you could just sit there and be fine or just move a little bit and the bullets would continue on and you're in a safe spot and then you can sit there and be totally happy and safe. In this case, what I've said is now the bullets have a lifetime and after a couple of seconds, the bullet disappears and a new one shows up and oh yeah, it's aimed right at you, right? So you gotta keep moving. You can't just sit pretty watching the world go by. Um, the valid start positions and minimum, maximum, right? And so that's just a calculation based on the width and the environment because we want all of our positions normalized too. Uh, let's see here. And then for each bullet, so there's six bullets we go through and we get the rigid body and um, we also set a lifetime for that bullet between the minimum and the max. And then same thing with uh, when we reset a bullet, um, we set the position and give it a new velocity, find it a new, well, so we have a choice, right? We, if we're aiming at the player, then we aim right at them. Otherwise we choose basically a random direction and we go in that direction. Um, and then the reset all bullets just calls reset bullet once for each bullet. Um, and then the fixed update, this is making sure Oh yeah, and that's true. I don't need to do that to do anymore. Time is scaled the way we think it is. Um, when we accelerate the game engine, we normally play the game at 100x speed, and so I just didn't want to have, you know, say, hey, let the bullet live for one second, except for if the game was playing at 100x, that would act like 100x. But the fixed delta time does get um, uh, dilated when you speed up the whole thing uh, your fixed delta time is scaled appropriately. So that's what that was about. Um, but so for here, uh, in our fixed update, we're going through the bullets and we're adding how much time has passed since the last assessment and then checking to see if we reset the bullet and basically end one bullet and then reshoot at the player. So again, it's really nice to have all of this code out and separate. So now we have the ship control system is one script and it has hooks for much of the visuals. And now the game is another set of code totally away from the ship code. And so you can see that here, uh, we have our environment set up and we have our four walls, the ship, uh, the ship is, again, just made of two spheres. Uh, we have our inspector, and uh, you'll see that it has the rigid body, sphere collider, and then the behavior parameters in the agent. And here, in here, is our list of events of what to do. Now, when I'm training and doing testing and stuff like that, these events are empty. I don't want to be doing anything here. Now, if I go over it in that demo scene that I show, uh, early on in the video, uh, near the title pages and whatnot, here you will see that um, I have on no thrust and on thrust populated. So in this scene, if something happens, right, and the agent is either hitting the gas or not, I'm responding to it by either emitting or not emitting particles. So the system is realistically reacting to whatever it is that the agent says that it's doing. So this is, again, this is how we hook in and start showing cool behaviors. And you can do animations or whatever you want, lights, 
um, all in here. In this case, I'm, I'm just keeping it simple with the um, it, it, particle system, but it really does add a lot to have that. Um, and sometimes it's actually really handy for debug as well, because you can see when it is or is not taking certain actions. So having some visibility into that is actually handy. Um, as for training this, you can see I had 32 simultaneous environments all training uh, in each instance at the same time. Um, so that was uh, one form of parallelism. At the same time, I set it up to run multiple instances so that I had uh, various instances on different CPUs of my system. And that got a little interesting. So I have a uh, system with uh, 16 cores, uh, 32 thread. So it's a, a pretty beefy computer. Um, and so, you know, the first question is, is all right, if I'm running this eight times and synchronizing them and getting it to train with all eight, do I get an 8x speed up or anything close to an 8x speed up? And unfortunately, the answer to that is no. So this is um, the game with normalized inputs, and it's a little hard to read anything in here, so you do need to turn on smoothing. Uh, but you'll see that each this run took me 14 hours to do 6 million iterations and to get okay training performance. This is not the best graph. This is not an overwhelming... Um, uh, endorsement for machine learning. This did okay um, and didn't do super awesome, but that was just that particular run. We have different runs will do different things sometimes. Um, so that was the first time I did that. Now, when I ran it in parallelized mode, um, I cut some really different behavior. So this is the first behavior. Um, and this doesn't look that bad, but let me let me turn down the smoothing and show you what it looks like as I'm training it, right? It's just this giant block of blue. Um, as the, the value goes up and down, it's really strange. You end up with this um, unusual sawtooth motion going on in the training. I am not sure what is causing this, right? This is very much... Um, only happening in the parallelized version of this training where it's good and the bad and the good and bad and there's like no in between makes it very difficult to assess what is actually going on uh, in the training. Um, you can turn on smoothing and get a better idea but it's still um, really hard to say. Now I will also say there's a big score difference between this one and that one because I did make it harder, right? This is where the bullets are being reshot at you and you can't find safe spots. Um, so um, the next thing I did is I also added to the experience buffer. So basically said get more experience between uh, trainings right between back propagation so I go through and I learn a whole lot with one policy and then I do a big hunk of back propagation to update that policy and then I do another hunk of training and so that's what's going on here so we're still getting a lot of this you know if you if you don't smooth it it's extraordinarily hard to make heads or tails of what the heck is going on here uh, but once you add some smoothing, it does actually, you can see that it's okay, it's actually training and it's doing something. And this is where it was, again, this is the more difficult case, right? So it starts way lower and then ends up almost as good as the one that could find safe spots. So this is actually a really good result. Um, and when I go ahead and play this, um, it came out pretty solid. It's not perfect um, by any stretch it will still have cases where I will see it do things and like okay I you know I could have dodged that one I think better than the computer did um, but there are absolutely times like that one where okay it's it's doing some pretty decent moves and um, 
you know, because the bullets have lifetimes and their start position is randomized and they're aimed at you, sometimes they'll appear just like right in front of you. Yeah, like that one. It'll appear right in front of you and then boom, you're dead and there's nothing you can do about it. Um, but I'm not seeing the consistent issues that we saw last iteration with it catching up to some of the bullets and then, you know, running into them. Uh, it seems to be much better about that kind of thing. So um, it's done pretty well, all things considered. I do think more training, it could get even better and better. Um, but, I, you know, I just want to kind of keep moving on. I don't want to spend all my time training on this one because we have the next iteration where I'm going to have targets for it to shoot at or a target for it to shoot at. And so we're going to see how it does with that. So that's what's going to be coming up next. The other big question, of course, is, well, I ran eight instances of this. Did it get anything close to 8x faster? And the answer is a resounding no, absolutely not. It did not get eight times faster. Um, it did, however, get twice as fast. So that was really encouraging, and I was happy to see that it got twice as fast. Now, why is it only twice as fast? Well, I went through and I looked at my processor specs and my GPU specs. Everything was idle, almost completely idle while this was running. It was very low CPU. It was very, very low GPU. Those two systems weren't what was taking up the bulk of time. So then the question is, is what is taking up the bulk of time? And I'm not totally sure. I've put some messages out on the Unity forums. I'm going to be seeing what else I can explore and learn. As far as I can tell, it's probably going to be one of two things. Either it's the inter-process communication, because there was one process that definitely had higher CPU, and so I think that's the process that's getting all the results from the instances and then collating them and doing something with it. Or, uh, so it's either that, or there may just be limitations with the fact that um, you're, you can only speed up the game up to 100 times, and on this computer equipment, which is very beefy computer equipment, and this game is a very simple game, um, that speeding it up to 100x only accelerates the game itself by a certain amount. But if that was true, Right, because you know we could have you know gone a thousand x and the CPU would have still been fine, but at the same time, if that was the the limitation, if it was actually the game speed, I do feel like seeing eight instances running at the same time should have given us a much closer to an eight x speed up. So two x speed up is pretty decent. It does help make scheduling starting runs and doing this kind of work a little easier because you don't have big fourteen hour long runs going on. Um, so it's certainly better than nothing, but there is absolutely a huge amount of room here for improvement. Um, I'm wondering with the Barracuda library, that kind of thing, if I have uh, you know reached a limit with network stack or something like that, if that's how it's communicating back and forth, as opposed to using shared memory or something super efficient uh, where it can actually just go back and forth like crazy fast. So. I think it's probably the inter-process communication that's really slowing things down. Um, but I'm hoping to hear from the Unity team about what it is that might be causing that kind of uh, performance drain on this hardware. So uh, here we are. It's up. It's running. It works. All of the code is going to be up on the GitHub. Thank you again to my patrons for supporting this. Um, if you have gotten some value out of the show, go ahead and hit like. If you've gotten a lot of value out of a couple of them, then think about hitting that subscribe. And then if you've really been getting a lot of value out of these or want to help shape the direction of this series, then please consider joining my patron crew over on Patreon. In the meantime, thank you, good luck, and happy learning.